Welcome to our The World Brief program, where we bring you a snapshot of today's intriguing global events. In a heart-wrenching turn of events, Andrew Mockinson, a man who spent 17 years behind bars for a crime he didn't commit, finally receives an apology from the UK's Criminal Cases Review Commission. His story sheds light on the profound flaws within the justice system and the long road to vindication for the wrongfully convicted. Meanwhile, over in the Maldives, former President Abdullah Yameen breathes the air of freedom as the High Court overturns his 11-year sentence, ordering a retrial. This legal twist adds a layer of suspense to the political drama unfolding ahead of the parliamentary elections, spotlighting the intricate dance between justice and politics. Across the globe, Japan's Prime Minister Fumio Kishida is setting his sights on South America, aiming to weave stronger economic ties and counterbalance the influence of China and Russia in the region. This diplomatic endeavor highlights Japan's strategic push towards fostering relationships with emerging markets and securing a future of mutual prosperity. Please stay tuned for detailed content on these compelling stories. In a world where justice often seems like a fleeting ideal, two recent rulings have reignited the flame of hope for many who believe in the power of the legal system to right its wrongs. From the United Kingdom to the Maldives, these stories of overturned convictions and apologies serve as poignant reminders of the human cost of legal errors and the enduring quest for justice. In the United Kingdom, the story of Andrew Mockinson stands out as a sobering testament to the fallibility of the criminal justice system. Convicted of a rape he did not commit, Mockinson spent 17 years behind bars, a period during which the prime of his life ebbed away within the confines of a prison cell. According to the Associated Press, his long journey to vindication reached a pivotal moment when the Criminal Cases Review Commission, CCRC, a body dedicated to examining potential miscarriages of justice, issued an unreserved apology for its failure to adequately address his case earlier. Mockinson's ordeal began with a wrongful conviction that seemed irrevocable until new DNA evidence emerged, pointing to a different suspect entirely. Despite his persistent efforts to have his case re-examined, with two applications to the CCRC being rejected, it wasn't until this incontrovertible evidence came to light that the wheels of justice began to turn in his favor. The CCRC's subsequent independent review led to the quashing of Mockinson's conviction last year, an action that, while rectifying the legal record, could scarcely compensate for the years lost. Helen Pitcher, the chair of the CCRC, extended a heartfelt apology to Mockinson, acknowledging the profound harm caused by the mishandling of his case. Although Mockinson expressed a sense of vindication following the apology, he pointedly remarked that it was too little too late. In the aftermath of this acknowledgement, another man has been arrested in connection to the rape, highlighting the grave implications of wrongful convictions not only for the innocent but also for the victims awaiting justice. Transitioning from the UK to the picturesque archipelago of the Maldives, a similar narrative of legal redress unfolds, albeit in the political arena. Former President Abdullah Yameen, who found himself ensnared in allegations of money laundering and bribery, has been freed after the Maldivian High Court deemed his 11-year sentence unjust and ordered a retrial. As reported by the Associated Press and Al Jazeera, Yamin's initial conviction was linked to accusations of accepting money in exchange for leasing an island during his presidency from 2013 to 2018. The High Court's decision to overturn Yamin's conviction on the grounds of an unfair trial has sent ripples through the Maldivian political landscape, especially with parliamentary elections on the horizon. This ruling not only liberates Yamin but also potentially reinvigorates his political party, offering a chance for redemption in the court of public opinion. The court cited procedural irregularities in the original trial and has instructed a lower court to commence new proceedings, leaving the door open for Yamin to clear his name fully. Yamin's case, much like Mockinson's, underscores the critical importance of due process and the right to a fair trial, principles enshrined in legal systems around the world yet sometimes overlooked in practice. While the circumstances and contexts of their cases differ markedly, one a grievous personal injustice, the other a high-profile political scandal, both stories converge on the theme of justice delayed but not denied. These narratives, emerging from disparate corners of the globe, remind us of the resilience of individuals fighting to clear their names and the capacity of legal systems to correct their course. As Mockinson seeks to rebuild his life and Yamin prepares to face his accusers once more, their stories stand as beacons of hope for those still ensnared in the long shadows of judicial error, waiting for their day in the sun. In a strategic move that underscores Japan's increasing engagement with the global south, Prime Minister Fumio Kishida is set to embark on a significant journey to South America, with scheduled stops in Brazil and Paraguay. According to Nikkei Asia, this visit, planned for early May, is more than just a diplomatic courtesy, it's a calculated effort to deepen economic ties with these two nations. 
Amidst the rising influence of global powerhouses like China and Russia in the region, Japan's overture aims to forge stronger alliances with emerging and developing countries. The delegation, comprising Kishida and a cohort of business leaders, will primarily focus on securing partnerships in decarbonization technologies and critical minerals. This initiative is part of a broader Japanese strategy to encourage South American countries to diversify their economic and supply chain dependencies away from Beijing, thereby enhancing their own economic resilience and sovereignty. Meanwhile, a pressing humanitarian crisis unfolds in Afghanistan, where approximately 250,000 children, recently returned from Pakistan, find themselves in dire need of basic necessities. The Associated Press reports that these children, part of families forcibly repatriated, are now facing a bleak future in their homeland. With Pakistan intensifying its crackdown on foreigners living in the country without proper documentation, many of these returnees, including a staggering 1.7 million Afghans, are entering Afghanistan with little more than the clothes on their backs. The NGO Save the Children has raised alarm bells over the situation, highlighting that nearly half of the returnees are children. These young souls are not only deprived of adequate food and shelter but also face significant barriers to education. A survey conducted among the families revealed a grim reality, almost all are grappling with food insecurity, and a majority of the children have yet to see the inside of a classroom since their return. In a different part of the world, Zimbabwe has taken a bold step towards alleviating its prison overcrowding issue while commemorating its Independence Day. President Emerson Umnangagwa granted clemency to over 4,000 prisoners, a move that has been welcomed by human rights advocates and the broader community. The Associated Press details that this amnesty, the second in less than a year, is not indiscriminate. It specifically benefits a select group of inmates, including women, the elderly, juveniles, the terminally ill, and remarkably, some who were on death row. This decision also extends to prisoners whose death sentences had been previously commuted to life terms, provided they have served at least 20 years. However, it's important to note that individuals incarcerated for certain grave offenses, such as sexual offenses and human trafficking, are excluded from this amnesty. With more than 60 inmates still on death row, this act of clemency not only brings hope to many families but also sparks a conversation about the future of the death penalty in Zimbabwe. These stories, spanning different continents and touching on issues from diplomatic overtures and humanitarian crises to criminal justice reforms, reflect the complex tapestry of global events. Japan's outreach to South America, the plight of Afghan children in need, and Zimbabwe's Independence Day amnesty each tell a story of nations navigating the challenges and opportunities of the modern world. Whether it's through forging new economic partnerships, addressing urgent humanitarian needs, or making bold policy decisions, these narratives underscore the ongoing efforts to create a more connected, compassionate, and just global community. In a world where the news cycle never sleeps, stories of innovation, intrigue, and intervention unfold, capturing the attention of global audiences. From the corridors of global health to the shadowy realms of international espionage, and the bustling streets of Amsterdam, these tales weave a complex tapestry of our contemporary moment. The Associated Press recently reported a significant stride in the battle against cholera, a disease that has seen a troubling resurgence. The World Health Organization, WHO, has approved an updated cholera vaccine developed by EU Biologics. This new formula is not just a marvel of scientific innovation, it's a beacon of hope. Simplified, cost-effective, and quicker to produce, this vaccine emerged from late-stage research in Nepal, demonstrating a potent defense against cholera. With WHO's approval, organizations like Gavi and UNICEF are poised to distribute this life-saving vaccine to the world's most vulnerable, with an estimated 50 million doses ready to bolster the global stockpile this year. This development comes at a critical time, as since January, 14 countries grappling with cholera outbreaks have requested an astounding 79 million doses. The fight against cholera is far from over, but with this vaccine, the world is armed with a powerful tool to turn the tide. In a starkly different arena, the Associated Press also brought to light a gripping tale of espionage and international tension. Poland has become the stage for a dramatic arrest, capturing a man suspected of spying for Russia's military intelligence. The stakes? Nothing less than an alleged plot to assassinate Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky. Identified only as Powell K, the suspect was reportedly ready to betray airport security information to Russian agents, focusing on the strategically significant Rzesojazianka Airport, a hub for U.S. troops and vital conduit for military and humanitarian aid to Ukraine. If convicted, Powell K faces up to eight years behind bars. This arrest underscores the intricate web of alliances and enmities that define our geopolitical landscape, 
revealing the lengths to which states will go to protect their interests and leaders. Meanwhile, the New York Times turned its lens to Amsterdam, a city renowned for its canals, culture, and, more recently, its struggle with excessive tourism. In a bold move to reclaim its charm and livability, Amsterdam is putting a halt to the construction of new hotels. This decision is part of a broader strategy to mitigate the tourist influx that has disrupted life for local residents. With a record 25.2 million hotel stays in 2019, the city's infrastructure and community have been under strain. By capping hotel stays and curbing new hotel development, Amsterdam aims to balance the needs of tourists and residents alike, striving for a sustainable future that preserves the city's allure while ensuring it remains a vibrant home for its inhabitants. These stories, though diverse in their themes and settings, share a common thread, the pursuit of solutions to complex challenges. Whether it's through medical breakthroughs, vigilant security measures, or urban planning, the efforts to protect health, safety, and quality of life reflect the multifaceted nature of our global society. As we navigate these turbulent times, the resilience, innovation, and cooperation evident in these narratives offer a glimmer of hope and a reminder of the indomitable spirit that defines humanity. In the ever-evolving landscape of electric vehicle, EV, technology, Honda supplier g has embarked on an innovative journey with steelmaking giant ArcelorMittal, as reported by Nikkei Asia. Together, they're pioneering a groundbreaking method for manufacturing EV chassis parts that could revolutionize the industry. This new technology stands out by allowing g to fuse multiple components into a single, large piece, a stark contrast to the gigacasting method popularized by Tesla and some Chinese EV manufacturers, which relies heavily on aluminium. The collaboration aims to harness the strength and versatility of steel, promising to slash the cost of vehicle body components by an impressive 20% compared to its gigacasting counterparts. With plans to roll out this method post-2028, GTECT is setting its sights on proposing this cost-effective and innovative solution to Honda and other Japanese automakers, potentially setting a new standard in EV manufacturing. Meanwhile, in the geopolitical arena, a secret, gentleman's agreement between China and the Philippines has come to light, shedding new insights into the delicate balance of power in the South China Sea. According to Nikkei Asia, the Chinese embassy in the Philippines revealed that during Rodrigo Duterte's presidency, a covert deal was struck to avert conflict in this contentious region. Under this agreement, the Philippines vowed not to repair or construct new structures at the Second Thomas Shoal, a territory it effectively controls, in exchange for China's non-interference with the delivery of food and other essentials to a Philippine warship stationed there. This revelation seems to be a strategic move by Beijing, aimed at unsettling the current administration in Manila, as President Ferdinand Marcos Jr. has yet to acknowledge the existence of such an agreement. This development underscores the complex and often opaque nature of international relations in the South China Sea, a crucial maritime corridor fraught with territorial disputes. Both stories, while distinct in their focus, one on technological innovation in the automotive industry and the other on geopolitical maneuvering, highlight the dynamic and multifaceted nature of global affairs. Whether it's through the collaboration between a Honda supplier and a steelmaking behemoth to redefine EV manufacturing or through the delicate dance of diplomacy in the South China Sea, these narratives underscore the continuous interplay between innovation, power, and politics on the world stage. Thank you for tuning in. The content above showcases the latest briefing reports and analytical synopses, thoughtfully curated by the 6 Do team. These insights stem from a wide array of reputable media outlets, think tanks, government sources, and specialized experts worldwide. We encourage you to explore these sources for a comprehensive perspective. Keep in mind that while the content may not always align with the official standpoint of 6 Do Brief, it's not meant to be taken as absolute directives for decision-making. Comprising seasoned media professionals, learned scholars, and accomplished scientists, the 6 Do team embodies a trailblazing, fully independent media entity. To customize 6 Do Brief to meet your professional needs, you have the option to subscribe to a diverse array of briefings on our website, 6 Regardless of your location, you can conveniently receive 6 Do Brief via email.